as I said, uh, uh, we will continue uh, now uh, this part, which is uh, connected uh, to interaction of uh, heavy uh, of charged particles. And last lectures uh, were about uh, interaction of light charged particles, as for example, electron or uh, positron. And now uh, we will uh, discuss the interaction of uh, heavy charged particles and ions uh, with uh, matter. Yeah. Uh, in this case, we have uh, electromagnetic interaction uh, and uh, one uh, type of processes which are connected with this uh, electromagnetic interaction, uh, they are uh, ionization. Yeah that uh, this is main type of interaction which is possible to use for uh, for detection. Yeah? Uh, second uh, possibility of uh, or second process uh, which is connected to electromagnetic interaction is uh, scattering. Uh, scattering with, for this heavy particle with electrons, it's uh, negligible influence yeah? because uh, electron is very light against this heavy uh, particle and transferred energy is uh, relatively uh, very small. Uh, also, in principle, the scattering on the nuclei, uh, it has a small probability because that is from this reason, because the size of nucleus is uh, uh, five orders smaller uh, than the size of atom. And uh, also, uh, you know, uh, maybe from Rutherford uh, scattering, uh, that uh, mainly uh, this uh, distribution is that uh, this uh, mostly this scattering is to uh, small angles. Yeah, that, that means this change of uh, of direction of movement of this uh, uh, heavy particle after scattering of nuclei usually, more probably, uh, it will be very, very small. Yeah, uh, But this is uh, also possible to be also backscattering, because uh, if you remember, uh, it is uh, uh, by this, uh, it was uh, 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 discovered by uh, Rutherford that uh, you have a small uh, nucleus inside uh, atom. Yeah. Uh, but this probability is very, very small. Yeah? Uh, second possible interaction of this heavy particle uh, is a strong interaction. Yeah? Uh, there are uh, nuclear reactions and uh, okay, that uh, in this case, uh, if uh, this energy uh, is uh, small, uh, it will be a small, very small probability of this uh, strong interaction. This is from this uh, reason, uh, because uh, you have mostly these heavy particles have uh, have a positive uh, charge. That means uh, this is the same charge as uh, for uh, nucleus in the matter. And uh, okay, in this case, uh, it's necessary. Uh, to go through this Coulomb barrier. And if this energy of this particle is smaller than this Coulomb barrier, uh, in this case, it is possible only by quantum physics, by tunneling. And in this case, this probability of such tunneling is uh, very, very small. And the influence of this, uh, of such interaction for detection, for example, it's uh, very, it's negligible. Yeah. Uh, if this energy is higher, in this case, it's a different situation. And we will discuss uh, such detector which, uh, uh, for which it's possible and it is uh, useful uh, to use this uh, strong interaction, this nuclear reactions. That uh, maybe I, it is for this high energy uh, particles and there are this hadron calorimeters. This, this, type of detectors is named as hadron calorimeters. We will discuss this uh, a little uh, later. Uh, this, uh, as I said, the scattering has very small influence. This is different from this light particle because 
uh, if you have uh, interaction of light particles, scattering of light particle uh, for electron on electron or nuclei, uh, you will obtain very, very, uh, very uh, big angles. And uh, in this case, this influence is big. Uh, but for 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 this uh, heavy. Uh, particle, this scattering has very small influence on path of this uh, of this particle. Uh, okay, in this case, this uh, ionization losses have uh, main influence, and uh, okay, that uh, only uh, and this is also reason why uh, this uh, track of this uh, particle uh, have uh, very uh, well defined. Uh, range. That means it's uh, you have uh, defined very nicely. It's possible to see a range of a particle in some uh, matter, uh, which depending on energy of this particle. And for a monoenergetic beam, you have the same range for all these particles. Yeah. Uh, okay. That uh, if you have enough energy uh, for this heavy particle, uh, you have uh, sometimes this ionization and transferring of uh, energy to electron uh, enough uh, that uh, these electrons will have enough kinetic energy to start ionization. Yeah? Such type of uh, electrons are named as delta electrons and uh, it is possible to see maybe you remember I uh, you remember uh, some uh, features from uh, this uh, type of detectors as a bubble chamber or uh, this uh, 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 such types uh, of track detectors in which it's possible to see also this delta electrons together uh, with uh, uh, with this uh, trace of uh, this uh, heavy uh, charged particle. Uh, if you remember from uh, last lectures, uh, we already obtained this beta block equation, beta block formula, uh, and uh, I said you that uh, this uh, this our uh, uh, exercise <laughs> to obtain this beta block equation was based on the assumption that we have this heavy particle. That means uh, our uh, determination of uh, this beta block equ equ equation was for uh, this really for this heavy uh, charged uh, particles. And if these particles are non relativistic, uh, we will obtain. Uh, this uh, beta block uh, formula, and if you remember, and or if you will look on this PowerPoint, which is uh, on the start of this uh, charged particle lectures, uh, you see that there are uh, four uh, parts, and uh, this is the, from uh, SI uh, unit uh, system uh, here. Uh, you have uh, some features of, of this uh, particle. Yeah, uh, that means this is uh, in this case this is charge of uh, this ion or of this heavy uh, particle square. This is from Coulomb interaction, and it is inverse dependency on square of uh, velocity. Yeah, this is this main properties which are important uh, for. Uh, this uh, heavy charged particle. Uh, okay, and uh, third part of this equation, it is uh, this part which depends on feature on properties of this material. Yeah, here uh, this is uh, atomic number of this material and uh, density uh, of this uh, atoms uh, in this uh, material. The Z is uh, given by number of electrons because it's clear uh, that this ionization depends on how many electrons will be met by uh, by this particle. Yeah, and last part, which is here uh, in color, uh, it is uh, uh, 
small law, uh, dependency on a feature of this particle. This is uh, logarithmic of square of velocity and here uh, this is energy which is necessary for ionization, yeah, for production of one uh, ion electron uh, pair. And uh, okay, th this is uh, this uh, part uh, for the case uh, uh, if uh, this uh, velocity of particle is non-relativistic, that means it is much smaller than this, uh, smaller than 10% of velocity of the light. Uh, if this uh, velocity will be uh, near to velocity of the light for higher energies, uh, it's necessary to include relativistic corrections. And uh, in this case, this part will be uh, in this uh, form. Yeah. Uh, what is important to remember, yeah, uh, that uh, it is uh, uh, important to know these main dependencies. Yeah. And main dependencies are inverse of square of velocity. Uh, this is uh, velocity of this particle. Uh, it is square dependency on charge of this uh, par particle which is moving uh, through this matter and uh, linear dependency on atomic number of this uh, material. Yeah. Uh, okay, that uh, it's uh, possible uh, to use uh, different detectors. One uh, for uh, absorption of whole energy and for determination of whole energy of this uh, particle. And uh, second, uh, this is a uh, uh, detector which is with smaller thickness, which is not enough uh, to stop uh, this particle. And in this case, uh, we uh, only absorbed uh, this energy which, which was produced by ionization uh, during this uh, this movement of this particles through this uh, detector. That means it's possible to use for determination of ionization uh, losses. Yeah. Uh, okay. That uh, in any case, this uh, heavy uh, particle, this path of this heavy particle will be influenced only, only, only negligibly or very, very small influence of this. Uh, this interaction during uh, it, it, that's from uh, from this uh, our uh, discussion of the scattering that this by the scattering we have only small influence. Uh, okay, if you have a non-relativistic case, yeah, it's possible to calculate or to look how it looks like this range of uh, this particle. Uh, okay, uh, for calculation of this range. Uh, it's possible, uh, it's necessary to calculate uh, how it looks like uh, throws path uh, from place in which uh, before this uh, thickness uh, in which this uh, particle has uh, kinetic energy uh, T0 and uh, because we want to know this range it's clear that uh, in the end of this range will be a particle in the rest. That means kinetic energy will be zero. And uh, okay, this is this is energy. And uh, okay, this is uh, here we have this ionization losses. Yeah, that means this is uh, this d e uh, per d x. That means this is how uh, big energy is lost. Uh, if it is moving uh, this uh, uh, unit of uh, of uh, length, uh, okay. But uh, in this case, it's clear that uh, this this is energy. That means this is this kinetic energy. Okay, fine. We have in kinetic energy, and uh, if you uh, know uh, that uh, this uh, dependency of kinetic energy. Uh, it is uh, this ionization losses they are here and this ionization losses are inversely uh, dependent on uh, v square and uh, m v square uh, it's uh, kinetic energy one half of m v square yeah 
That means it's possible that this is dependency on V squared. That means this is de dependency on kinetic, uh, on kinetic energy. And if you will put here uh, uh, inverse of this, yeah, this will be dependency on T. Uh, we will make integral. That means this, that this range is depending on square of kinetic energy. Okay, if we know this T0, it's possible uh, from this to calculate also uh, kinetic energy in different uh, places in, in, uh, in this uh, X position during movement from start of our foil or uh, our uh, our path uh, up to uh, this uh, uh, this position x, which is in the in this range. That means here we have this x, yeah, and it's possible to calculate kinetic energy for any position of this particle by this formula. Yeah. Uh, still, it's necessary to say this is non-relativistic case because we used uh, this uh, equation for calculation of kinetic energy. If we have uh, relativistic cases, uh, in this case, this beta is one, that means velocity is uh, velocity of the light. And uh, in this uh, case, uh, we have a situation because here will be uh, C squared, that means there will be no changes and uh, this, uh, uh, this ionization uh, will be uh, will be same, will be not dependent on uh, kinetic energy because velocity will be still uh, velocity of the light. Here will be uh, also this logarithmus will, will change uh, only a, uh, a small uh, changes that means uh, in this case uh, this ionization is uh, is constant uh, it's not changing and we are talking about uh, minimal ionization yeah. I will show you also uh, more of this and uh, this minimal ionization uh, it's uh, for different uh, materials uh, and uh, depends on density of materials but okay this uh, in the range of this uh, 15 MeV per uh, gram and uh, cubic uh, uh, quadrat of uh, centimeters. Uh, in this case, uh, this is possible to use for. Uh, it is possible to use for uh, for calibration of different detectors because if we will use. Uh, this uh, situation that uh, all particles are going throws, yeah, and we have only measurement of uh, ionization uh, losses. Uh, it is possible uh, to know from thickness of this uh, material to know how uh, how large energy was uh, produced by ionization here, yeah. And that means we know this energy which was uh, deposited uh, in this uh, in this uh, material, and uh, okay, that uh, we will look on output signal, and we know uh, which energy uh, produced this uh, output signal. Yeah, it's possible to calibrate uh, detector. Here, uh, this is uh, uh, course course of ionization. Uh, losses and uh, if you uh, will look here, it's possible to see that ionization losses with uh, decreasing of energy starts to increase. For high energies, for high velocities, uh, these ionization losses are small. Uh, if this uh, velocity uh, will uh, decrease, and will be uh, smaller and smaller. Uh, this uh, uh, this uh, ionization starts to be uh, higher and higher. Uh, okay, that means 
uh, the main part of deposited energy uh, will be on the end of, uh, of this track. Yeah? This is for single particle and uh, for parallel beam with the same energy, you will obtain this. This is given by this because uh, still the scattering is may produce uh, a, a small uh, changes of track and uh, this path should be uh, a little different. That means will be some uh, smoothing of uh, of this uh, of this uh, uh, this uh, track uh, of this range. That means for parallel beam will be uh, this width uh, much uh, much uh, thicker. Okay. Uh, now, this is uh, this ionization. This is interaction by electromagnetic uh, interaction. Uh, here, uh, now, we are uh, talking about uh, this uh, strong interaction. Uh, this is in the case uh, if we have uh, hadrons or this heavy ion with uh, high energy. Yeah. Uh, in this case, uh, it's possible by this uh, interaction because if it is uh, high energy uh, and collision with uh, nucleus, uh, it will be uh, spallation reactions. That means it's uh, production or uh, this is uh, collisions between uh, nucleons uh, and uh, hadrons with this uh, nucleons inside uh, nuclei. And uh, also, if energy is enough, it is possible to produce the uh, new particles. Yeah? Uh, this is given by quantum physics. Quantum physics uh, make possible uh, to produce a new particle if you have enough energy. Yeah? And the uh, uh, lightest hadrons uh, there are pi mesons, there are pi plus, pi minus, uh, pi zero. And uh, also, if you have enough energy, uh, it is possible to produce these uh, mesons and uh, you have meson production. It will be higher energy, even higher. It will be possible to produce also, also pairs of uh, nucleons, that means proton and antiproton and uh, you will uh, have new uh, protons, antiprotons, neutrons, antineutrons. Yeah? And uh, okay, uh, in this uh, case, it is a very important uh, situation because, okay, if you have uh, very high energy of this hadron, by spallation reactions with uh, uh, nucleus, uh, many other particles will be produced and also some of nucleons which are in this nuclei uh, will obtain high energy and they will have high energy. That means uh, many of hadrons with very high energy are produced by this spallation, spallation reaction. Okay, that if this new hadrons will have high energy, uh, they will produce by spallation reactions new hadrons. That means still will be more and more hadrons, and you will obtain uh, you will obtain hadron shower. Yeah? Such shower of particles is named as hadron uh, shower. Uh, it's necessary to say. Uh, that uh, this uh, hadron shower will have also electromagnetic component. Uh, you may be remember, I hope, that uh, electron with high energy and also gamma with high energy will produce this uh, electromagnetic shower, in which you have electrons, uh, positrons and uh, gammas. If you have this hadron shower, in this hadron shower you have uh, pi uh, mesons and uh, also pi zero. And this pi zero uh, is de decaying 
with the lifetime here uh, two, two gammas. And if this energy of pi zero is very high, also energy of this gamma is very high. That means they will start to produce electromagnetic shower. The same or similar is uh, for uh, pi plus and pi minus because they it's possible that these two uh, mesons are decaying with this uh, decay time to muons and neutrino. And these muons are decaying to electrons and neutrinos. That means on the end you will again obtain electron with very high energy and it's possible uh, to obtain uh, component in this hadron shower you, you will obtain uh, electromagnetic uh, component and uh, for for example for detection and for determination of energy uh, of this hadron which is uh, on the start uh, point of this uh, hadron shower uh, it's necessary to know ratio between this electromagnetic or and hadron components. Uh, okay, uh, also big amount of neutrons are evaporated from this uh, highly excited nuclei, which are which were part of the spallation reactions. That means uh, it uh, and uh, also this energy which is necessary uh, for evaporation of these uh, neutrons. It is uh, about eight MeV per nucleon. This is in principle uh, binding energy of these uh, neutrons. And uh, what is important that uh, I will, uh, we will discuss this a little later, that uh, we have uh, uh, spectrometers which measure uh, this energy of high uh, energy hadrons. Uh, which are named as calorimeters. Yeah? And these calorimeters, uh, if we have calorimeters in which uh, this uh, electromagnetic and hadron components uh, will produce the, the same energy, uh, they are named as uh, compensation calorimeters. That means this is the same response to electromagnetic and hadron components. It is important from this reason uh, not to have a change, uh, not to have a change of uh, uh, efficiency and uh, energy output or output for uh, different energies with uh, with higher and higher energy of these uh, hadrons. Uh, okay, that, this was uh, this uh, possible interactions uh, for this uh, heavy charged particles. Again, there are some processes which are given by electromagnetic interaction and some processes which are given by uh, this uh, strong interaction. Yeah? Uh, okay, how looks like this uh, detectors of charged particles and uh, ions? Uh, from Last lecture, you know that uh, it's possible to use gas field uh, detectors. Uh, and uh, in this case, we have uh, ionization chambers. This is, if you remember, it is uh, in this uh, for this uh, lower uh, voltage and uh, this lower voltage part of uh, this uh, volt ampere characteristic. For higher voltage, uh, you have proportional counters. Uh, for this, uh, you will have uh, this ionization, secondary ionization and uh, uh, proportional uh, multiplying of, uh, of number of electrons and also of output. Uh, you have uh, multi-wire chambers, which are in reality proportional counters, but uh, with many electrodes which are uh, which are uh, given by uh, many uh, wires and uh, you will obtain these multi-wire chambers and uh, another type of detectors which is possible to use uh, also three-dimensional uh, picture of uh, interactions 
uh, and uh, it used uh, some multi-wire chambers on uh, one side of this and uh, this uh, uh, this is for x axis and uh, for z it's necessary uh, to use uh, drift of this uh, charge to electrodes which are in this multi-wire chambers and that means it's uh, possible to use time of uh, and uh, time of uh, drift uh, and uh, that means uh, this is the reason why this uh, chambers or these detectors are named as time projection uh, chambers. Uh, there are these gas field detectors and also uh, we already discussed that uh, it is uh, uh, very uh, very useful to use also scintillation detectors for detection of charged uh, particles and uh, also uh, semiconductor uh, detectors. That's these are this type of detectors which we already discussed uh, last uh, lecture. Uh, how it looks like for this scintillation detectors? In this case, it is uh, important this thing that if you have uh, heavy charged particles and uh, also in the case of uh, uh, this uh, small velocity, uh, in this case, this uh, ionization will be very, uh, very high. Yeah? And uh, this is the reason why sometimes this ionization is so high that you have not enough ionization centers, which is possible to use for conversion of this ionization energy to uh, some light and to, 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 to this output. That means you will obtain some saturation. Yeah? Part of energy is not converted for uh, particles which have uh, very high, uh, high ionization and uh, this energy is very high. That means, uh, okay, it's uh, necessary uh, to describe this. Here is possible to, to see that it's possible to see that it is no linear dependency and uh, you have uh, some saturation uh, for uh, for uh, high energy and uh, it's uh, uh, very uh, the saturation is higher uh, for higher charge because uh, in this case this ionization is much higher uh, such uh, output or such response it's possible to uh, describe by semi-empirical Birks equation. This is here. And uh, OK, that uh, this uh, total light output, it's possible uh, to calculate by, by integration of, of, of this. And uh, in this case, you have two parameters. One parameter is A. Uh, this is absolute scintillation efficiency. Yeah. And this uh, KB, this is parameter which joins in density of ionization centers with ionization. This is this, uh, if this is high, yeah, uh, it's uh, uh, in this case, uh, you will, uh, if you will have very small number of this uh, conver uh, centers which converts this, uh, ionization energy to scintillation, in this case you will obtain uh, this, uh, this saturation. Yeah. Uh, in the, if, if you will look here, uh, you have uh, two uh, very important limits. Yeah. Uh, if ionization is very small, yeah, it is near to uh, zero. Yeah, uh, in this case, uh, it's possible to see here. Uh, this is very small, uh, this part. Yeah, and now you have linear dependency on this ionization. That means in this case, this output is linearly dependent on ionization and this is no problem in this case it's no saturation it's clear because you have small ionization and this uh, 
number of the centers which converts this uh, ionization to a scintillation light is enough to be, even if it is a very small density of them, uh, because if ionization is very small. Uh, second uh, possibility is that if this Kb is uh, near to zero, that means uh, in this case you have a very big number of this uh, of these centers uh, which converts this uh, uh, this ionization to uh, to output, yeah, scintillation output. Uh, in this case, uh, this is the same situation uh, because this uh, which if this is near to zero, this is zero, and again you have linear uh, dependency, and okay, you have no saturation because the situation is that you have very big number of uh, of these uh, centers which are trans, uh, which will make transformation of this scintillation to uh, of this uh, ionization to scintillation. Uh, in opposite, if you have a uh, very small number of this uh, possible transformation, that means this Kb is going to, to infinite. Uh, in this case, uh, have a look here. Uh, if this will be infinite, this is uh, in any case for any ionization, uh, it is very uh, much uh, higher than this one. Yeah, and okay, that means this is, this is infinite and this is going to zero. Yeah, that's okay. This is going to, to zero. Uh, and uh, if you have ionization, very high ionization, in this case, uh, if your uh, Kb, that means this uh, number of this uh, or density of this uh, uh, centers which, uh, which uh, transfer this ionization to uh, scintillation is uh, uh, is uh, uh, is uh, not uh, <laughs> infinite. That means it will be Kb will be not zero. In this case, uh, if this ionization is very high, it's infinite. Uh, it will be in any case very much higher than one. And again, you will obtain uh, if uh, it is uh, infinite here. That means you will obtain uh, this uh, infinite here. Uh, you will obtain infinite here, but in any case, it will be much higher than one. That will be K B D E D X uh, A D E D X. That means uh, D E D X. It's possible uh, to uh, scratch, and uh, okay, you will obtain uh, this. And this is really the saturation. You will uh, see that it is. Uh, it will be for any uh, ionization, uh, you will have uh, the same output. Uh, that we, you will obtain this saturation, which is possible to see here. And in this case, it will be a uh, linear constant uh, value. Yeah. Uh, OK, that uh, uh, it's possible to look uh, how looks like this uh, dependency of light output on ionization losses. And uh, for this is for A1 and KB1. And uh, OK, in this case, that uh, it's possible uh, to see how it is, uh, how it is uh, changing. Yeah, and uh, the same, it is this dependency of uh, light output uh, on uh, KB. If uh, KB uh, is uh, increasing, that uh, this uh, light output is uh, is decreasing. Uh, that's that's possible to see also, also from this. Uh, okay, that's uh, it's also possible uh, to use for this scintillation detectors uh, this property that we have uh, this uh, sum of uh, scintillation materials uh, will have uh, two different. Uh, output uh, signal with different uh, decay and uh, okay that means uh, it's possible uh, this is this is case for example for 
uh, barium fluoride that uh, they, uh, in this case, we have two uh, possible types of uh, the uh, decaying of this uh, scintillation of this excited states. Uh, and uh, in this case, it's possible to make comparison of this uh, short and long component of this uh, of this decay. Yeah, uh, that means in this case and uh, this uh, ratio between these two components is depending on ionization. Yeah, that this is different for different ions. If ionization is very intensive, it is. Uh, different uh, ratio between this uh, short and long component, uh, then this ionization are smaller, yeah, and uh, you have, for example, ions with uh, a smaller uh, charge. Uh, okay, that uh, this is given by this because uh, you have uh, uh, two different excited states and uh, okay, they have uh, different ratios between this excitation probability, which depends on ionization losses. Yeah. Uh, it's also possible to use this uh, pulse shape discrimination of uh, particles, uh, not uh, using uh, scintillation detector with uh, two uh, different excited states, but it's possible to use two scintillators. Uh, that means you will use two scintillators and you will have uh, two, uh, two uh, thickness uh, of this. And uh, in this case, uh, again, it's possible uh, to, uh, to use the, uh, this uh, uh, decay uh, output this output light output for one scintillator and uh, one for second scintillator and from <coughs> ratio is possible to obtain information about this uh, scintillation. Uh, <coughs> and if you will uh, look on on this uh, scintillation, uh, it is depending a square of uh, z. It is clear. Here you have this excitation and dependency <coughs> on charge of, uh, of this ion. And OK, and this is also depending on inversely on V square. And because it's possible to multiply by mass of this particle and divide by two, you will obtain that this is also depending on <coughs> uh, on inversely on uh, energy, on kinetic energy of this particle. That means this is main dependency of ionization losses. And in this case, it's possible to identify of uh, this particle by ionization. <coughs> Uh, very often, uh, we use uh, also two scintillators, one with uh, very small uh, thickness uh, and second with uh, uh, large thickness uh, and uh, throws first. Uh, this particle will go throws uh, and you obtain information about this ionization and uh, second, uh, will stop this particle and you will obtain information about total energy. Yeah? That means you will have uh, information about ionization and information about total energy and you will obtain information about charge of this particle. Yeah? That's very important, important information which is possible to obtain. You will identify this particle. And how it looks like, it's possible to see that here uh, one output, this is uh, total energy, uh, second output, this is ionization, and uh, you see that you have uh, difference nicely, uh, make differences between different uh, particles with different, uh, different ion with different uh, charge. Uh, 
Okay, that's uh, there are particles which are uh, which use uh, electromagnetic interaction and <laughs> for low <coughs> for lower energy. And now we will look on uh, detectors uh, which are uh, working in the range of high energy uh, ions or high energy hadrons. Uh, <coughs> as we said, if you have high energy hadron uh, that uh, during the spallation reactions with nuclei by the strong interaction, uh, you will produce uh, new particles and also you will skip away uh, nucleons. That means on the end you will obtain this hadronic shower. And end of this hadronic shower is uh, in the situation if this particle yeah, uh, have not enough energy, which are necessary for production of pi meson, uh, mass of pi meson is about 100 MeV, or which is not uh, possible or not enough uh, to, uh, to make this spallation reaction. That means this de Broglie wavelength of this hadron uh, is comparable with this nucleus, not with uh, nucleons. Yeah. Uh, okay, that means it is somewhere around this 100 MeV, and this is end of, of this uh, hadronic shower. And if you will check, if you will look on your hadron, that means it's also approximately po possible to calculate how many particles will be produced by uh, by this uh, hadronic shower uh, to use this end energy and uh, uh, divide this by uh, by uh, by this uh, by uh, this total energy by. Uh, this energy, which which is uh, okay, uh, and uh, it's uh, uh, it's also possible that some part of this energy will go out of detector. Yeah, if you have not enough radius of this detector, yeah, uh, some part of this energy of this shower which is going outside, yeah. Uh, and uh, it will escape from detector and it will be not detected. Yeah, that's uh, if you have not enough thickness of this detector. This is this longitudinal energy flow, uh, flow, and also if you have not enough area of this detector, that means uh, it is not enough uh, radius of this detector. Uh, okay. Uh, if you are uh, thinking about uncertainties which are influenced uh, this uh, by uh, three processes and there are three types of uh, these uncertainties. Uh, there are statistical fluctuations which are given only uh, because number of produced particles are fluctuating. Uh, in this case, this is uh, given by this uh, Gaussian, and uh, they are uh, this because you know uh, that uh, this uh, uh, this uncertainty, statistical uncertainty, this possible this absolute value, it's possible to calculate a square root of uh, energy, square root of number of this particle, and number of this particle is given by uh, energy. Yeah. Uh, that means that uh, this absolute value is square root uh, of number of particles, that means square root of energy and relative, uh, relative uh, uncertainty is given here will be square of this energy divided by energy. This is a relative, relative uncertainty. And that means it will it will be square root of energy divided by energy. It is one divided by square root of energy. That means uh, this relative uncertainty for uh, determination of energy by hadron calorimeters uh, is given uh, as the statistical fluctuations of statistical uncertainty is uh, is uh, increasing or is depending. Uh, on 
uh, inverse of uh, square root of energy. Uh, second component of this uncertainty of this hadron calorimeter, uh, there are different noises uh, and pedestal uh, which are uh, produced by uh, electronics uh, of this uh, hadronic calorimeter of this reading of this uh, output. Uh, in this case, this, this is not changing with energy. Yeah, that means this is not dependent on, en on energy. Uh, that means it is some constant here and dividing by energy. That means uh, this uh, relative uncertainty is depending on energy as one. This is constant. That means it is dependency as uh, inverse of, uh, of energy. Uh, and last uh, un component of this uh, uncertainty of hadron calorimeter is uh, calibration uncertainty that depends on photomultiplier, nonlinearity, some homogeneities. Uh, and uh, in this case, uh, this is uh, not depending uh, on uh, on uh, energy and uh, it is same for any energy that means this relative energy is uh, constant. Okay, that's uh, its uh, uh, detection uh, in this case, uh, as I uh, said, uh, many of neutrons are created and uh, this uh, energies of this uh, neutrons are about this 8 MeV. Uh, I said to you that uh, we have not only this hadron shower, but you have also electromagnetic component, which are produced by decaying of this pi zero or, or pi plus, pi minus. And uh, it is uh, very oftenly uh, this uh, then uh, this ratio between output of uh, this electromagnetic shower and hadronic shower it's about uh, 10 35 uh, percent higher uh, is uh, response uh, of this uh, electromag to electromagnetic shower than to hadronic shower but if you will combine these materials which are used for active and passive uh, part of calorimeter. That means uh, to this part in which this shower is produced and in this part in which uh, you have detection of this, uh, this uh, shower. Uh, if you uh, will produce the, and use uh, materials, special materials, you will obtain this jet that this ratio will be one and that means it will be a much uh, better situation for uh, determination of energy. Uh, also it's possible to use uh, some uh, materials which absorb these neutrons which are produced here and uh, which energy will be loosed uh, and uh, after that they uh, produce some uh, some energy. Yeah. Uh, also, it's possible to 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 to, to uh, look on uh, how to uh, how to shield uh, this uh, detection systems uh, from this uh, soft photons, which are uh, produced also uh, from this uh, interaction, because uh, you will obtain by dispellation reactions very high excited. Uh, nuclei. Uh, okay. Uh, now, uh, last part of uh, today lecture and uh, will be uh, a little about application of heavy charged particle spectrometry. Uh, we will look. Uh, this is only some examples of uh, application. We will look on two uh, different fields. Uh, one field is uh, identification of super heavy elements by means of alpha decay sequences because this is detection of low energy alpha, that means uh, low energy heavy charged particle. 
And uh, second will be a study of hot and dense nuclear matter by means of a charged particle uh, spectrometry. Yeah. Uh, okay, fine. How it is with production of super heavy elements? Uh, you know, uh, I hope that uh, you know something about uh, models of uh, nuclei, but okay, uh, we have a, a model which uh, describes uh, this uh, nucleus as droplet of nuclear matter. Yeah, and for such model, uh, from such model, we see that uh, stability uh, of this uh, nuclei uh, decreases uh, with increasing proton number. This is uh, given by this, that because if you have uh, many protons in the nuclei, uh, you have uh, electric repulsion between the same charges. Yeah, that means you have uh, still, because if you have more and more protons and uh, uh, this range of electromagnetic interaction is uh, infinite, that means uh, it, you will have still uh, bigger and bigger force, repulsive force uh, between these protons. Yeah? This is reason why we need to have more and more neutrons yeah, for heavier and heavier uh, nuclei or heavier and heavier atom. Yeah? Uh, okay. Uh, in this case, uh, this is some competition between the strong nuclear interactions and this Coulomb energy, which is this repulsive uh, forces. Yeah. Uh, okay. If there will be no special conditions and uh, special properties of uh, nuclei, and uh, if there will be only this uh, drop model uh, influenced uh, properties of, uh, of nuclei. In this case, the very heavy nuclei, which uh, have uh, uh, which have masses higher than uranium, will be not possible to be stabilized and existed. But we know that we have also this uh, shell structure and that we have some special magic number for protons and neutrons, number protons and number of neutrons. For uh, them, uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this nuclei, which have this magic number of uh, neutrons and protons, are more stable. Uh, this uh, magic number of proton and neutron is possible to obtain from shell model. And uh, from this shell model, extrapolation of this shell model shown that uh, we have some stability island ab about near to uh, number of protons 114 and the number of neutrons 184. I will show you that really it is possible also to see that somewhere in this range we have some very stable island of uh, stability. Yeah. Uh, and now, uh, if you know or remember, uh, for example, uranium has 92 protons. That means still this is uh, very long track from this uranium to, 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 to this. Yeah. And uh, okay, that uh, if you want to have uh, nuclei and atoms which are heavier uh, than uranium, it is necessary to uh, produce such uh, nuclei artificially. Yeah. And the uh, problem for such production is that uh, we, you have very small cross-sections and uh, on the end, 
for, for example, uh, this uh, nuclei or atoms or elements which have a uh, number of protons higher than uh, 105. Uh, in this case, uh, you will have so small cross-section, so small probability of production of such uh, atoms and for such nuclei uh, that you will produce by uh, long production time irradiation of uh, some target by accelerated uh, nuclei uh, that you will produce only single nuclei per week or something like that. Yeah. And if you have only single nuclei, it is necessary to have an ambiguous uh, and uh, clear identification. Yeah. Uh, it is uh, very, very uh, difficult to, to produce this uh, because uh, this heavier uh, element, are, uh, this heavier elements are produced uh, by, as I said, by uh, acceleration of uh, nuclei and collision with target nuclei and uh, you will obtain uh, one, uh, one uh, nuclei uh, from these two. And uh, for energy, you have, uh, it is necessary to have uh, two uh, different and contradictory uh, conditions. One, this energy, it's necessary to be sufficient for overcoming Coulomb barrier because you have two ions, two positively charged ions, uh, which uh, are colliding and you have repulsive force between them. And for, uh, for heavy elements, this repulsion force is uh, very, very high. Yeah? Uh, okay, and it is necessary to be as small as possible because you need to produce relatively stable compound nucleus. Uh, this nucleus will be in some excited states, will be very excited nucleus. Uh, and, uh, but it is that this excitation should be not so high because uh, it will be so high, it will be uh, possible some fission or uh, some uh, evaporation of neutrons or some uh, another nucleons will go out uh, from this nucleus and you will not obtain this heavy nuclei and heavy atom uh, which you need. And uh, how this uh, new heavier have uh, new atoms uh, heavier than uh, uranium were produced. Uh, first possibility is neutron capture. For example, uh, it was possible to produce the, uh, neptunium and uh, plutonium and heavier, for example, in reactor uh, by uh, neutron captures. And uh, okay, that that means that uh, it will be uh, capture of neutron after that uh, beta decay, and you will obtain uh, from uranium, neptunium, two decays, two beta decays, and you will obtain plutonium. Yeah? Uh, second possibility is reaction uh, of uh, light nucleus uh, with heavy target. You will obtain compound nucleus and it is uh, possible to excite uh, these excited states of this uh, compound nucleus by emission of gamma and you will obtain uh, some uh, compound nucleus from, from these two, uh, two uh, target projectile nuclei. Uh, and uh, another possibility is that uh, you will have fusion of heavy nucleus, not light nucleus, uh, because if you know, uh, if you, 
if you want to have heavier and heavier atom and heavier and heavier nuclei, uh, you need to uh, to have also a heavier uh, projectile. That means uh, these projectiles are with a nucleon number about 40. Yeah. And there are two possibilities. If you will have target which is uh, uh, which is very very stable, for which uh, you have number of protons and number of neutrons near to magic numbers, uh, you will obtain very small excitation of this uh, of this compound nucleus and uh, it is uh, not enough energy to emit neutrons and to or uh, even uh, protons and in this case it is a much better situation this is named as cold fusion uh, second possibility if you want to go for higher still higher and higher uh, number of uh, protons and neutrons uh, you will be in the range of targets uh, which uh, are not uh, with magic number of protons and neutrons. That means uh, you will obtain on the end uh, very high excitation and uh, it is uh, much, much problems, uh, much more problems uh, with uh, to, to, to obtain this compound nucleus and this the excitation of them. Uh, in any case, this uh, even uranium, but uh, also this heavier, this transuranium elements, uh, they decayed by alpha decay sequences. Uh, it is also a possibility natural fission. Yeah, but mostly it is going through this alpha decay and you will obtain alpha decay sequences. Many alphas are emitted. And uh, these alphas, these alpha particles, contain information about uh, energy differences between flowing nuclei, about uh, also uh, about which nuclei uh, produced these alpha particles, which decay to have. And it is possible to do identification of this. Uh, okay, if you want to uh, detect a super heavy uh, element, and a super heavy element which you produced only in one piece of them or a few pieces, yeah, it's necessary to capture all of alpha from decay sequences. That means it's necessary to detect all alpha particles. And for detection of alpha, there are heavy uh, charged particles you need to have, and also you need to measure energy of this alpha. That means it's necessary uh, to, uh, to detect all this uh, alpha. Uh, okay, that uh, means uh, uh, this uh, first experiments, uh, which uh, were uh, with this uh, method, uh, in which uh, you will use this uh, identification of this alpha decays and identification of even one uh, super heavy uh, nuclei, were uh, made uh, at GSI Darmstadt on the device ship. And uh, these elements from 107 up to 112 were identified. In this uh, case, this uh, cold fusion was used and uh, as target, uh, this uh, lead and uh, bismuth nuclei were used. Yeah. And uh, this lead and bismuth is near to these magic numbers. That means it is very stable uh, target uh, nucleus. Uh, okay, that, that means it's, it was uh, possible to identify these uh, this targets. Here you have some rotate, rotated uh, target uh, with this uh, LED, and this, uh, this LED is uh, relatively, uh, and because uh, you need to have, this is, this is beam, 
and uh, this beam uh, it's necessary to have this beam very intensive because probability of production of such uh, nucleus, this super heavy nucleus, is very, very small. That means it's necessary to have a uh, very big uh, intensity of this beam. And uh, because uh, cooling of this and uh, by ionization, uh, big energy is transferred to this target. That means it is uh, very, uh, very big heating and it's necessary to have cooling, uh, very effective uh, cooling. And it is, uh, it was uh, uh, made by a rotated uh, target. Uh, okay, uh, by beam uh, on target uh, nuclei, this uh, proper super heavy nuclei was uh, determined, was produced, and uh, it's necessary to determine this. And uh, it's possible uh, by magnetic and electric field uh, to uh, identify uh, this uh, nuclei uh, which have a uh, uh, ratio between a charge and mass which we expect. That means, okay, and uh, after that, uh, on the end of the system, it was some foil in which uh, this super heavy or this produced element was stopped and around uh, this uh, foil, uh, the, uh, this uh, alpha detector or detectors for detection of alpha particle, this heavy charged particles, were placed. Uh, uh, okay, this rotated target, as I uh, said, uh, that uh, it is uh, a very intensive beam, 10 to the 12 nuclei per second. That means it's very. Uh, it's uh, possible to produce this compound nucleus and because we know energy of this beam, it's possible to calculate also velocity uh, of this uh, uh, of this compound nucleus. And uh, from this velocity, it's possible also uh, to make identification by uh, this magnetic and electric field. Yeah. Uh, okay. And uh, as I said, uh, around will be uh, this uh, alpha uh, detectors and uh, these detectors were silicon detectors, silicon strip detectors, which this is uh, semiconductor detectors, uh, which have uh, resolution about 14 kV, very nice. And coverage was about 80% uh, of uh, whole angle. Yeah. Uh, they used also uh, germanium detectors for detection of uh, gamma photons, which uh, are produced by the excitation of excited nuclei, and uh, it is also possible uh, to use for identification. Yeah. And uh, these uh, cross-sections uh, were around uh, picobars, picobarns, and uh, that means that uh, production of single nucleus were per 10 days. That's very, very, very small probability of production. That means very intensive beams during many months and production of only uh, one nuclei per, uh, per week approximately. And as I said, they produced uh, uh, atom element uh, elements from 107 up to 112 and they named them as borium, hasium. This is from, uh, because that this is in Darmstadt, is in Hessen, uh, Germany region Hessen, and uh, from this hasium. Uh, Meitnerium, this is uh, from Germany physicists, and Darmstadtium, it's clear, it was, uh, this laboratory was in Darmstadt, and Rentgenium Copernicium. Yeah. This is examples of, for example, production of this uh, element of rentgenium. Yeah. This is this alpha decay, and as I said, every alpha was detected, and from energy, and uh, it's possible to identify of end of these sequences, and uh, from this, it's possible to calculate uh, which was uh, this uh, nuclei, nucleus uh, on the uh, this mother nucleus for these decay sequences. Yeah. 
Uh, for uh, for uh, production of even heavier uh, nuclei, uh, it was necessary to use this this hot fusion with uh, different target, with heavier target, and uh, it was uh, very big problems with this. That uh, in this case, if you will look on the card of uh, super heavy elements, you see this is proton number and this is neutron number. Yeah, and uh, this alpha decays are in this case here because two protons and two neutrons are emitted. Yeah? That means you have uh, this step, this step, this step and this step. OK, perfect. And you are in the place. This is known place. Yeah. This nuclei we know. The this isotopes we know. That means end of these sequences we know. <coughs> it is possible to identify. For this hot fusion, it is very big problem because it is ended in this region. Uh, this uh, green, it is this uh, fission decay. That means it is uh, ending here and it is no connection to known region. That means identification of this is very problematic. That means it is not possible to work in this way <coughs> that we know all this alpha up to now. This is here, 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 here. And uh, OK, that it is a very big problem with identification. It was reason why, why for example, this uh, uh, super heavy, which were produced by this cold fusion, uh, obtained confirmation by uh, the scientific community earlier. Yeah? And it was possible also to put name of this. <laughs> <coughs> it was possible uh, to celebrate new element. <coughs> this is uh, this is situation before approximately uh, 15 years. Uh, later, it was possible to see more isotopes, and it was possible to connect these two parts together. That means <laughs> this was the reason why it was uh, possible uh, also uh, celebrate or uh, set, uh, confirm uh, this, uh, uh, this elements which were produced by this hot fusion. And first of them, uh, they were uh, 114. Uh, element which was named as uh, fluorovium and uh, 116 which was named as livermorium and there are here decays of this yeah. that means that uh, this is uh, this alpha decay sequences and okay here it was identified and okay uh, on the base of this identification of this end of the sequences it's possible to identify that uh, also this produced uh, nucleus yeah, and uh, this was uh, discovered, or uh, this is a nice laboratory at, uh, at uh, Russia, uh, at Dubna. And uh, OK, that uh, in this case, also this was collaboration between uh, United States uh, physicists and this uh, Russia physicist that uh, this uh, uh, United States physicist produced these targets which are based because this is necessary to have transuranium targets. Yeah. And this is also reason for this name of these elements. Because fluorovium, this is a, a Russian physicist which uh, discovered uh, also new super heavy elements and uh, he proposed these methods how to obtain this. And Livermorium is because this laboratory, United States laboratory, is Livermore uh, laboratory. 
Uh, okay, here uh, there uh, you see that now this is connected, and also now this is uh, elements up to 180. Yeah. And uh, okay, that uh, it's uh, possible uh, to uh, to say and uh, that uh, this uh, uh, super heavy uh, we know up to element now 118. This is named as organeson because this is uh, in the same. Uh, this is now this uh, seven period is completely full. That means this last element here, 118, is on the end of period of this uh, Mendeleev table. And uh, okay, and this is named as I said, organeson. This is from this reason because this is this. Uh, this uh, raw uh, gas, us, neon, krypton, argon, radon, and now it's organeson. Uh, what is uh, very interesting and uh, very nice region of uh, study for which it's possible to use also partly this spectroscopy of this uh, charge uh, heavy uh, particle uh, is uh, chemistry, chemical analysis of single atoms. I said to you that in this case uh, only one nucleus is produced. Yeah? Uh, and uh, we will look on special case, this is element 108 and this is named as Hassel. I said to you that <laughs> this is from <laughs> because <coughs> because this uh, laboratory is uh, in the region Hessen, and uh, this is uh, one of from this uh, last element which is possible to chemically study. But now there are studies uh, only up to 114. Yeah. Uh, okay, and uh, in this case, this hassium. It is in the seven period, as I said to you. Now we have even end of this seven period. And uh, it is in this same place as osmium. And if you remember, osmium is only one element for which you have uh, oxide, uh, osmium, and uh, four. Uh, oxygen. Yeah. And uh, for example, if uh, it, it was uh, this uh, uh, this uh, eight group of oxides, yeah, this is very 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 special and very interesting. And uh, it was uh, very interesting to study if uh, still uh, these features for this hassium are this that you will obtain uh, the same oxide. Yeah. And uh, it was possible to study, uh, because it was possible to study volatility, yeah, uh, because these oxides from this eight group are very, very volatile. Yeah. That means uh, if you have a narrow channel with decreasing temperature, from minus 20 degree up to 170 degree. Uh, these elements, which are more volatile than others molecules, will fly before adsorption to, uh, to, uh, to these places where this uh, uh, temperature is uh, smaller. That means uh, you will, uh, around uh, this narrow channel, you will put this your detectors of uh, of alpha particles, and you will see which detectors will see this alpha, and you will obtain in which for which temperature uh, this uh, oxide of hassium uh, will be uh, frozen on uh, on wall of this uh, of this channel. Yeah. And from this you will obtain, if will be in this place, which you expect, for example, same as 
for osmio, it will be possible to say that you have this uh, the same oxide because it is working in this way. You will produce this atom and you will by helium, you will push by helium flow, you will push, push to this narrow channel and during this flight, uh, this uh, hasil will start to oxide and you will ob obtain this oxide of, of hasil. Yeah. And that means it was possible to study and really now it's possible to say that oxide of hasium is really this and this still uh, this hasium have the same properties as another uh, elements in this uh, eight uh, group yeah okay that means it it was nice study and this super heavy a very nice uh, nice region of uh, of uh, physics and chemistry and connection between uh, physics and uh, chemistry. Uh, OK, 